Goro of the Watatsumi Island Resistance ready and waiting. Goro Goro ready to roll. It's good to see uh, Goro finally in the TCG. Finally, maybe Ito's salvation. Maybe not quite. But hey, everybody, welcome back to our video. And today we're going to be talking about Goro. And honestly, uh, this will probably be a little bit of a shorter video because there really isn't too much to talk about uh, when it comes to Goro in the TCG. So anyway, if you're new to these, like, first impressions as day one guy, I teach you everything about the character and any, any types and tricks that you want to find out, as well as some team building. And let's get right into it. Nothing really else to say here. Honestly, there we go. There we go. All right. So I built two decks here. One of them, for example, uh, you know, just how that goes. Usually when I do uh, these things, I like to build something, for example, uh, sometimes when the character kind of doesn't have too much to talk about. So let's get into this first one with a Ningwong nuke deck. And I do have a little uh, new feature I've added to our little day one showcases where we do this. And I'm going to slide it over right now because I'm actually going to show you the full deck list right with here. And we will talk about it more later, but let's talk about Goro's kit first as we do. So Goro's kit, normal attack does nothing important. As usual, uh, you wouldn't expect it. Just go to physical damage, but the sort of sort of the thing that you know Goro is going to be doing is both his skill and his burst, and they're both basically the same thing, just like the main game. So as we get past here, Inazuka all round defense deals two geo damage to the active character, which is great, by the way. Uh, that is a big thing we'll start talking about later, and it'll summon one General's War Banner, and that is a little status that'll appear before you, uh, right below you, and I'll probably do it. Actually, no, I'm out of dice, so. One general's war banner. If your party, your party's characters will deal one plus geo damage, and it has a duration of two rounds. So once you do it, boom, bop. You know, you're gonna say you're probably gonna be stuck here on setup because that's how setup characters usually work. And then you can boom into your character, and then you can deal one bonus geo damage for the rest of the round. So that's pretty cool. Now moving on to the burst, jungle forward on the victory deals two geo damage because it says there's a booster in there, and you don't wanna you don't wanna factor that in. Uh, it should be two at base once we get into that and past this and it will summon a little friend over here creates one general's war banner and summons general's glory general's war banner once again just deals one plus geo damage and has a duration of two rounds can sack it to three and general's glory which is going to be a summon you'll see over here uh in the end phase deal one geo damage and your party has two geo characters create one crystallize now the crystallize is a really oh. random thing uh that comes with the little summon that uh usually comes out over here uh honestly it doesn't really do much it triggers geo res which is funny uh in the end phase so hey there there you go your dendro res fans if you really want to trigger something uh in the end phase because you're addicted to that then sure go for it uh it's a very silly it's a very silly little addition i'm honestly not sure why it's uh there i guess i guess it helps for survivability but it's a it's a bit random and honestly like that's it like you literally just stack your general's war banner on your characters and like that's it that's all you do really and that is kind of the whole kit of goro and there honestly isn't really much to say uh there are there really aren't any tips and tricks outside of he's a setup character you know he's gonna take a little bit of time uh to actually get going it is nice that they gave him a duration of two rounds and it's really easy to just reset your thing unlike you know shenha's quills where you need to you know you only get two and you just need to keep like restacking them restacking them and you can consume them in an instant with the team that you're in uh with geo of course you know having literally only one reaction uh that does very little and doesn't get consumed immediately uh you get to do it for the whole time so that's really cool there we go i dropped the burst uh you saw earlier and i have a boost so it does three even though it does base a two here's general's glory just a little nice little cute summon uh honestly is not the most effective and you realistically also just never really use it at all uh just based on how uh you know goro's playstyle he really is a set it and forget it uh you know drop your summon, drop your drop your skill and then Trigger. roll from there now i don't really have uh, yeah since i don't really have anything else to say i think we might as well start uh talking about the deck list here so this is just a for fun uh ningwong nuke you know, if you want to, you know, it's just like, you know, hey, Ning Wong is one of the characters that, you know, well, she isn't the best in the TCG. Definitely people enjoy playing her or just enjoy her in general. So here's the deck list right here. Uh, you know, using Wagner's and a really basic uh, companion engine to just fuel myself up and then share the bow between Sara and Goro for the boosting so that Ning Wong can deal 5 billion damage. Uh, it's pretty fun. I did try Bennett at first. Doesn't really work because... Bennett is way too slow. You know, you have to set up all the way to Bennett Burst, and then you need to move into Goro. It's just too much. 
moving along here and playing against a uh, I, I was actually very happy to match into this deck because it is a you know as a hub magic you know <laughs> people are probably getting sick of this deck at this rate you know constantly fighting it especially uh ctg is <laughs> during this week as i'm recording this now just moving into ning wong she's got two boosters and there and there there we go deals five damage which is simply just a skill that's also because i'm plus one on my weapon Oh, and they're doing magic dice things. Yep, yep, boom, 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 boom. You see it go. Uh, the thing that is, uh, I guess, hmm. I, I would call it, I would call it like, you know, I guess, like, I kind of wish they did a little more with this kit overall. Like, says Shenha can boost her, boost her teammates to absolutely no degree. And Goro is almost effectively the same, except, of course, he has a uh, round a round timer instead of usages so of course that does make him a lot stronger it makes more sense for geo uh no point in asking it to spam reactions because that makes no sense uh in this context but you know like the su the summon kind of feels like an afterthought really and as much as it gives you like you know as it, as much as it refreshes your thing uh you really realistically never really feel incentivized to use it uh you know with it because the benefits that it gives is like oh man you swap Nagoro, you have to spend the dice for and everything can't reduce it with uh you know most abilities so it's really just not it's really just not that worth it like i know i'm kind of ragging on goro but it's just not worth it uh, half the time to even use it but it's cute uh you know cute little doggy so there we go going through that we'll go ahead and slot this away now and ning wong is just gonna keep doing what she does best nailing the damage five damage uh from skills which is great well, and i believe i can just ah uh, no not quite i still have a little i have to chew through a little more senora always does always does have that one ability to come back so it's not over just yet there we go very nice yeah crow feather cover uh coming in clutch making boosting my damage to honestly uh no avail i'm getting a lot of damage out of that but overall it's just it's nice it's nice to be able to boost geo characters and i think over time you know goro's utility will be boosted by the fact by actually adding more geo characters to the game uh so the only other foreseeable like dps is like navia but that's gonna be a while because you know navia just came out and otherwise i mean that's kind of it like there's yunjin who's like my favorite but yunjin's not a uh, dps character uh she's not going to be shilling out 14 damage like my ning Wong just did there but yeah no it's there really isn't uh too much else uh that could possibly come out now i will show the proper deck uh where goro actually does in the meta and that would be uh his combination similar to bin uh but now it's called dig except i'm not using dig because i don't have uh, I don't have Daya out. I'm using Barbara. Uh, the only reason I picked the Barbara variant is because I just enjoy Barbara a lot more better as a character uh, when playing when playing in comfortability uh, versus Daya because Daya makes it feel like you know uh, if you don't if you ever run to a match where you're just like you know a few healing points this. off uh, you're screwed pretty much. Of course, Barbara does actually come with more drawbacks now because having elements on your person, especially when fighting, you know, uh, freeze has become a lot more viable in patch 4.3 as well as Azaha magic. You know, you really don't want to deal with the stuff, but this is really, really standard. It doesn't play. Ah, does it? I don't know. I wouldn't say this plays 100% like Ben. You're still going to do T1 skill on Dea and or Barbara, you know, as you do all the time. There really is uh, no difference there. And then you swap into Goro and then you drop at least one at least one at least one skill and then your other hyper carry can usually start taking advantage of it a little early now the one thing i did like about goro's kit uh, <laughs> you know which i should have brought up earlier is that he at least, he at least does 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 damage because like in the main game he does do like a little damage but it's like a smidge you know it's like it's like literally like he slapped you it doesn't really do uh that much so it is nice to know that he does at least do a little bit of something and of course with the self boosting uh similar to shenha you can get the damage pretty high when you get things like weapons and stuff especially if i was playing something more similar uh to you know that sara deck in friends uh i would be able to start dropping like four geo damage per hit which is actually pretty reasonable uh you know considering he's just a support but yeah yeah this match uh does actually end up taking a while because you know I, th we're both playing setup and i'm also not playing like super duper optimally i'm just gonna like all right we'll see what happens i always do uh try a little bit uh you know i do want to showcase the deck in its proper degree but i do want to try and get the uh star character to actually get to get them get them to show off but uh you know it really doesn't happen and it's very difficult with a support character like this 
but yeah, no, we're just gonna let the we're gonna let the match roll through. Uh, I'll talk about the deck list. This one, since it's actually proper, uh, you know, Wagner's with the changes in 4.3. It's got three great swords uh, in this deck to make sure I actually trigger it. And that is one of the advantages of Dig with Daya variant is that you know you can share you can share your great sword usages with Daya and Noel and or Ito if you really want to play Ito. Uh, I don't know why you would, but <laughs> uh, but like you know, WGS Bell Sack Sword, all of them can use it. Uh, and it's unfortunate that like, you know, there really isn't more um, great swords. There is like, you know, uh, Beacon, of the, Beacon of the Red Sea, which came out this patch, but I really am not the biggest fan of that one because you don't, I can't really find a foreseeable uh, user without like this immediate benefits, like the bell immediately gives you a shield point, Sack Sword immediately gives you a dice, you know, WGS, just literally the most broken claymore, assuming you get to use it. Like it really is uh, not the best option, honestly, out of all of those. Otherwise, Wagner's instantly draws those as long as you play three random weapons. So that's definitely the key that you want to watch out for there. And then just generic companion engine doing your job to reduce the cost, draw draw your entire thing. Barbara Talent, uh, because Barbara Talent is super good. I actually have it on here now, so I can just swoop and swap around for free, which is super nice. And then everything else, you know, it's really, really standard. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting that I would say uh, Dig with Dea is definitely the better version of this deck, and it's the one that I actually see uh, most realistically in tournaments. But, you know, like, it's interesting to see how Bin has evolved ever since Ito uh, sort of got truncated. And for good reason. Uh, he was a little... He, he, he's, been, he's been a little bit of an overtuned character, and people were definitely sick. Uh, you know, watching him, uh, watching him constantly destroy you, uh, you know, either in random matchmaking or bracket, like, it really was not, uh, an enjoyable experience, you know, especially after a few patches at some point, but yeah, Preparing going through this match, it's the same game, it's the same game plan, you swap between your characters, you know, try to absorb the damage, there's actually a skill issue here, I should have swapped Barbara, full healed my team, and then done that, but Wish you'll see, <laughs> you'll see I get punished, but realistically, uh, it doesn't matter too much, because I still have plenty and plenty of sustain in my hand, uh, to keep the ball rolling, there we go, Opera Abbey Clays, very useful, I've really turned around on Opera Abbey Clays, honestly, uh, it's one of the cards that I really didn't enjoy at the start, because I'm like, this feels very silly, um, but over time, I'm like, oh wow, it's actually not that bad, and yeah, sliding right through, uh, I'd say, hmm, interestingly enough, I think Goro ends up slotting the best with Noel. Of course, since Ito is, you know, like, uh, lying on the ground, he is going to have a bit of a difficult time, you know, uh, doing what he wants to do. But since Noel at base, you know, her damage is all kind of hidden, right, in sweeping time, uh, you can start doing two damage on her shield, which is pretty nice, uh, you know, especially because you combine it with reaction, with crystallize, always this plus one, meaning you're going to do about three damage per hit, which is actually reasonable, you know, because that's three damage is the baseline for most skills. So you're, it's where you're going to, that's where you're usually going to be aiming for uh, when it comes to uh, the damage number. And Goro kind of evens that out, so that's nice. Boom, boom, bop. I love tenacity. I get a maximum value out of that. Oh, wow, Chef Mal. Give me all the value. Thank you very much. There we go. Two damage, enough to smack out Hu Tao. Thanks to Goro's little buff there. Now it's going to be a Bennett 1v1. Ouch. But I cost out my dice effectively so I can trigger Liven and then hit Bennett with a big slam. And I'm almost there, almost there. Still going to take a while to tear through this match, but yeah. Actually, uh, I probably could talk about uh, the other deck a little more since we are going to be kind of we are we are going to be kind of waiting uh, a bit for this match to continue. So yeah, uh, this one I already mentioned it. Wagner's engine trade the bows between Goro and Sara because King Squire super OP, being able to skill, you know, skill and then pass it over to your friend and then skill again, very very strong. And then otherwise, everything is almost, almost identical uh, to this deck, except for the fact that I put Adeptus in it, just so I could flex pretty much, but that's about it. Uh, that is really the only difference between that. Yep, trying to finish the end game. WGS, uh, glad to see this weapon actually make a proper return because of uh, Wagner's being way stronger now. Uh, you know, you it's a lot more realistic viable to play, especially in Claymore decks, because WGS used to be the OG monster, but you know, over time, since it was so inconsistent uh, to pull the weapon without having a super sustain like Noel, uh, you know, you would, you would, it was cool, but then, you know, over time with decks being more consistent, it had to slowly be phased out, and Noel and Ito would favor more sustain over, you know, trying to fish for that one weapon that would win you the game.
but WGS is definitely not a force to be messed with. And uh, neither is this Yulen with full stacks, which oh man, uh, I'm still gonna make a Yulen video because I'm not I'm not super I'm not super happy with the teams uh, that I've looked at so far in the meta. I'm like, oh, that's okay, interesting, perhaps that's all right. But we will get it. We will get it eventually um, by the end of this patch. So gonna finish the job this turn, I think. Yep, pizza <laughs> and and that. Boom. Good call. Completely shield up. Deny you any hope of making it through. You can throw those dice at me. It does literally zero damage, just like yours. And crunch. And then we finish the job. <laughs> Boom. Goes for a stealthy bow shot. Not bad. Oh, yeah, because you want to trigger your NA. It's very nice. Crunch. GG's. And that's it. Yeah. Goro helped, uh, Goro helped, you know, a good amount during the middle game, especially when fighting Hu Tao. Uh, my hyper carry is stronger than yours because I can shield myself. Hu Tao, unfortunately, cannot do that. She can only heal herself from a burst. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, a, a really short video uh, for Goro. He really does not have a lot uh, going on, but I think it does beg the, uh, you know, good discussion that we can have in the comments is that how do you feel about elemental boosters uh, heading into the game? Shenha, obviously, a menace to society ever since she was released uh, all the way into 3.7 Ray. Uh, she still is, you know, super viable. Uh, we just don't play her that much anymore, of course. Uh, but she, you know, she's always been, she's always been super strong. Uh, you know, so much so that she even had to get changes, of course. And now there's Goro here who, you know, I think he's really just kind of capped by his element. Like, that's kind of the only problem. And like, they kind of made his summon really flimsy. Uh, you know, doesn't really do that much. But how do you feel about, like, future... Uh, characters that will come in the that will come to boost individual elements you know there's characters like baruzan uh that exists to boost boost element and now we have uh, as of course of this patch we have chev Rus, who's gonna boost overload damage uh you know so that's really cool and overload of course in the tcg is a very prominent reaction uh that can sometimes set up into really devastating things so who knows uh what can happen but who you which, which booster do you want into the tcg first or just someone who boosts a certain element because i think it'd be really interesting uh, to see what they can do with that kind of stuff but anyways with that being said uh let's move on to the deck list over here here we go here we go and here are the deck lists for you go ahead and copy them down they'll be of course in the description and the comment section so if you want to find them of course you can just copy them here if the link doesn't work for whatever reason but yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about um that's pretty much all i have to say about you know this uh th this guy he's really he's really not got, got not not got too much going on and that's all i got today thank you all for watching and i'll see you later goodbye Weapon at the ready. You never take